Hello and welcome to the Provider Development CPD Week for educators who want to make learning an adventure. So today we're diving into a classic framework, the Bloom's Taxonomy. Joining me in conversation is Gemma, a fantastic teacher ed trainer with a passion for creative lesson planning. Gemma, thanks for being here. Hi, Rachel. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to chat about Bloom's Taxonomy with you today. It's a framework I've used a lot in my teaching career. Absolutely. So let's start with the basics. Can you explain Bloom's Taxonomy for me and also for listeners who might be new to it? Yeah, definitely. So Bloom's Taxonomy is basically a hierarchy of thinking skills. So it breaks down learning into six discrete levels from remembering facts all the way right up to evaluating information and creating new ideas. Right, so it's a bit like climbing a wall for learners. <laughs> yes, exactly, although a little bit less strenuous. But the idea is that students build a strong foundation by mastering those lower level skills before they can tackle the more complex ones. Well, that makes sense. So as an ex-teacher, how did Bloom's taxonomy help you? Well, tons of ways, really. I mean, first off, it helped me design lessons that targeted different levels of thinking. So I can use the action or sometimes called command verbs to help me set aims for my sessions and make them really measurable. That way, we can see how far a student has traveled in their own learning. So as an example, if I was teaching extended writing skills, I might start by having students list some key features of a good piece of academic writing. They might want to include things like structure, paragraphing, introductory and conclusion phases, and making reasoned judgments. Then we can move on to applying those features within our own writing and practice those skills together. And then lastly, students could peer mark and give feedback on each other's work, which is a really evaluative skill, as long as they remember to use that actionable feedback. It also helps to develop questioning techniques and helps your students level up. You can stretch, challenge and plan for additional support in all areas of your curriculum using Bloom. Oh, that's a great example, Gemma. It sounds like Bloom's um, taxonomy helped you create well-rounded lessons. Uh, definitely, but as with everything, it's not perfect and it does have some limitations. There's a lot of sort of discussion out there about how it's quite rigid. And we all know, don't we, that learning isn't always a neat step by step process. Sometimes students might use higher order, th order thinking skills, even when they're still acquiring that basic knowledge. But that's OK. It's all about supporting skills development at any level, really. Interesting point. Um, are there any other drawbacks? Yeah, there is a risk of overemphasizing the higher levels of the taxonomy. You often hear people talk about AO3 and those higher order thinking skills, but the foundation knowledge is still crucial. And there is a risk that some teachers might misinterpret it, focusing too much on fancy projects, perhaps neglecting the importance of building a strong base first. So remember, it's OK to focus on all areas and have different students working within different areas to develop their own skills. So it's a tool, not a rigid rule book. Exactly, Rachel. Use it thoughtfully and Bloom's taxonomy can be awesome. It helps with lesson planning, activity creation, questioning techniques and making sure that your students are developing a deep understanding. Couldn't agree more. Thanks for sharing your insight, Gemma. My pleasure. OK, listeners, if you're interested in learning more about our um, our use and blooms taxonomy in your classroom, we do have a resource which you can access from um, the link. Until the next time, keep on being blooming amazing. Thanks, Rachel. Bye.